Over here, we got the higher end graphics cards. And then over here, we got the lower end graphics cards. Now, all of these are 40 series other than these three right here. And then there is a 1660 Super. That is actually the graphics card that I built or that I used for my niece. Now, the reason that we have so many of the higher end and newer things is because I do run a PC business. And because of that, I really do like building like the more premium, newer computers just for warranty and reliability. I have only gotten, uh, I wanna probably say maybe six or seven people that have purchased a computer with an RTX 4090. Now, I do wanna say none of these have graphics cards in them. This is just something that I've built up over the past couple of months and figured I would go ahead and share. These we got, 4070 Ti, 4070, 4070, 4080, 4080, 4080, 4070 Ti, 4070 Ti, 4070, 4070, 4070 Ti, 4070, 4070. So you can see there's just so many different um, 4070s. Now, Galax is hands down, for, for at least for me, because the height-wise 60 case with the graphics card flipped sideways, we actually have another Galax PC that we're gonna be building. Um, that's why that case is down here. I'm actually, I'm just waiting for the, um, uh, the new AMD CPUs to come out. I did end up putting a couple of lists together for you just of the best white graphics cards. And then we also have a list full of the best black graphics cards. I didn't want to just leave you guys hanging with me just kind of like recording and showing you guys the graphics cards that I have been using. Uh, this list, it goes from the RTX 4060 to the 4060 Ti to the 4070 to the 4070 Ti to the 4080. And same thing for the white, we go from 4060 to this 4060 Ti's. And I do also want to say that I also have a, uh, a bunch of other lists for you. For those of you that are like looking to like build an actual computer, like I have some of the, the better pre-built gaming PCs that you can buy, just a top five list. We have the height Y60 PC that we ended up doing a couple of weeks ago and just all of the PC builds that you have seen me do on YouTube. I also, I put the list together for you guys. Like this is 7,800X 3D computer that we ended up doing and it includes, I was just about to say, are you kidding me? There's no uh, graphics card, no image available for that. Real quick, just wanted to say that if you would like a PC from me, my Facebook business page is linked down in the description below. I do not charge you anything other than the cost of parts, which I do in fact give you a full list of everything with the final cost before I order it all with my own money. You do not pay me anything until you see the video, the performance, the benchmarks, and all of that kind of stuff. So again, link down in the description below. As far as my recommendation goes, I do wanna say it does depend on the CPU that you're using, but at the end of the day, it's pretty obvious to me that this right here and the 4070, that's definitely going to be one of the better options for you they want to show you guys the the motherboard video here so i want to make this for the um the new it's kind of similar it's basically the exact same thing as the graphics card uh episode it's just me kind of going over all the motherboards that i've used throughout the past month or two and um i honestly don't do very many amd computer builds but i do want to make a all right that's a better shot of it but i do want to make a video just kind of like going over some of the better uh like the better motherboards for the new series of amd cpus because from at least from what i'm aware of the newer motherboards for those cpus aren't going to be coming out for i don't know the time period but they're not going to be coming out as, as soon as the the new amd cpus come out so what i do want to say is the 4070, if you're gonna be getting a 4070 or a 4070 Ti, what you do want to do is you want to make sure that you're getting an i7 or an i9. It doesn't matter if it's 12th, 13th, or 14th generation. Now, I do know that Intel is having some problems right now and I'm fully aware of that, but those are really the, those are at the more like business level side of stuff. Those are not like for people like you and me that are, running and at least from what i'm aware of because i haven't had any issues with my computer and i am i'm i'm literally rendering out content every single day across five different or four different channels right now 
one of them was terminated on YouTube. It was my shorts channel. I really don't care about that. I don't know why it was terminated, but it was. Maybe it was because they thought I wasn't me and I was re-uploading and creating shorts from my longer form content. And then I had an animation channel and I also had an AI channel, which I ended up selling. So in total, I've had about seven channels over the past uh, probably three years. And now I currently just have my Dan Does ones. I got my Dan Does game, I got my Dan Does PC, my Dan Does car, and then my Dan Does talks. So I'm like rendering out content across a bunch of channels in 4K, and I'm obviously recording in 4K, I'm editing in Photoshop, and like I'm doing all of these things, and I have not run into any problems with my CPU. And the reason that I, I swear I did, did end up explaining all that for a reason, and that's because the newer i7s and the newer i9s in the 14th generation, and then the i9 for the 13th generation, Intel is having problems with the, um, there's too much power going to those CPUs, and it is impacting the longevity of those CPUs because of that. And the reason I was explaining that is because I don't think that you really on, on at least on your level, if at least if you get a good cooler, like I have, I'm thinking that that's more, it's people are running into more of a problem that just don't have a, a, a computer that's cooling them properly. I can't do it. So anyways, I got a new computer build that we're going to be doing here with the, it's, it's in preparation of the new AMD CPU releases because it's going to have a 4070 40, 40, Super 7800X 3D and then when the new CPUs come out from AMD, unfortunately I have to purchase them. Uh, I don't have connections with AMD so um, I, it's, I'm probably going to be a couple of days late in comparison to other people like Linus Tech Tips, Hardware Unboxed and Gamers Nexus and all these other people but uh, yeah so we're going to do some benchmarks between the new AMD CPUs in the 7800X 3D to see if it's actually worth upgrading to the new CPUs. You don't wanna pair a low-end CPU with a high-end GPU because what ends up happening is your CPU or your GPU isn't able to work to its maximum performance because the CPU is limiting the higher powered graphics card. So you basically just bought a higher end graphics card but you're not getting the maximum performance. Now, if you do this and your plan is to upgrade the CPU because maybe you just don't have enough to get both of them, then that's perfectly fine and that's totally understandable. Your computer is still gonna run. You're not gonna like run into like any crashing or anything like that. You're just, you got a high-end graphics card and it's not going to give you the performance that that graphics card is capable of because your CPU is on the lower end side of stuff. Whereas if you do that over here and you get a, a lower end graphics card and you pair it with a high end CPU, it's pointless because your higher end CPU, I mean, depending on what you're doing with your computer, I'm, I'm guessing you're whatever gaming and rendering out content. And at the end of the day, at, at least at this point in 2024, most applications are relying much heavier on the graphics card side of stuff. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Um, obviously, I run a PC building business. So if you would like a computer from me, feel free to message me on Facebook 